Alright, what's going on guys? Today I want to show you guys how I do this transition here and here are also some other examples on the screen. So for this one, it's actually pretty easy. Uh, I just do a fractal noise transition. So you want to have your clips ready. Uh, so I just, I just took this one from the arcade edit. This is like typically where the beat hit, right? So this is where I want my uh, transition to come in. So uh, what I see people doing is when they set up their clips, they kind of just have like, you know, this is, they cut the, they cut the X's because it's not needed, right? But that's not the case. You want to have some leftovers so that it could actually properly fade in. So where this beat hit is, uh, I have something like the map, so I kind of like to bring this back a little bit so that it's able to like, you know, this is the buildup and this is where it's actually fully revealed. Um, to get started is you add a solid layer, a black one, and then you're going to trim this solid layer to the length of your comp and then you're going to pre-comp and name this one fractal you can stay organized and then I'll, like you know label that a different color uh you're going to open this up and you're going to open up fractal oh sorry wrong one fractal noise and what you want to do is change the fractal type to dynamic and noise type to spline and then open up transform scale that bitch up like hella um probably like more than 500 is fine so how i like to think of this is you're going from you know this is basically you will see nothing when there is fully you know when this you know when the screen is fully white but once there's you know darker your fade will uh, your clip will fade in so keyframe brightness on contrast uh i kind of just do both and let's see here Right here, I want it to be fully revealed, but there's like a little bit of white. You can do, you know, full black if you want to. It's not necessary. I'm going to go in the middle and change the strength of how strong, you know, the stronger, the you know, the darker the black or the gray is, you will see more of the um, clip, um, you know, bleed in. So at this point, I'm going to decreases so it fades in a little bit and then let me go back out here real quick because i need to get the beat and then just mark this i guess this is my reference point i'm going to keyframe my brightness and for this one i'm going to use speed graph oh wait i forgot i'm so dumb yeah easy easy keyframes don't be an idiot like me and you're going to want to make sure that these two points basically meet up and they're kind of sharp so right here is kind of like a buildup, and then here you can also do the same thing uh yeah so we have our you know i guess our bleed in now what i like to do is keyframe evolution and uh, i guess like crank that not too much make sure there isn't a uh an extra number because that is the amount of evolutions it's done keyframe this too also do the same Except I would do it a little bit over because I wanted to show that it spins a little bit. You can actually add turbulent displays if you want to add like a little bit more of a warp or a squiggle effect. So now that we have this, it kind of you know, you know is dynamic with the beat. You can open up switches, toggles the switches in mode is able to see track map. And you're gonna take the bot, your your clip, and you're going to do Luma inverted. So that way it takes, um, yeah, like I said earlier, like it goes from you know your white, uh, your white to black, and it also this applies that here. What I like to do is um, I like to add a shake. So I'll show you guys how I do that too. So I'm going to add in an adjustment layer and resolve so um i actually basically go use my um my own shake tutorial on dissolve shake it's basically the same thing so keyframe amplitude and here in the middle i'll probably have it at one also i like this to be a little low frequency just because i like it to wobble a little bit and then change your shake settings how you like
and then to keyframe for the keyframes I like to do uh, kind of like this Like this, it just looks like a little hill. And this looks pretty bad, but that's why we add, you know, some movement. Make sure you parent both your clips to null, as well as this one, your bottom, your bottom footage, so that everything follows. So for this one, I'm just gonna do a classic face zoom so we're just gonna zoom in a little bit while also bringing the frame or the clip to her face. Graph it. And for this one, I also like to use speed graph just because um, I'm more familiar with it. Or I guess I like it better for this. It looks a lot smoother. But yeah, um, that's basically how you do it. If you have any other questions or if you guys have any other effects that I have done in previous edits that you guys would like me to cover, feel free to comment them. Yeah, thanks for watching.